Right, so the purpose of this video is to show you how to build, if needs be, and install an Avano long wheelbase and short wheelbase. We're over here at Transport HQ Europe uh, because depending on how you've ordered your Avano, you may get it pre-built or you may get it flat packed. Depending on where it's going and what country it's going to or how you've ordered it, it may come pre-assembled to go in or it may come completely flat packed in pieces. So we thought we'd do a video to, uh, it's relatively self-explanatory. It's a lot easier than IKEA flat pack, but we thought we'd try and just make it a bit easier for you if you build it yourself and show you what comes in the fitting kit so you understand how to do it. So for a long time with Avanos, you've always needed to go to, the, uh, to those guys to have it installed and then they approached us about selling them in Europe. And also then we discussed about us shipping them out from the UK because it's not something we can do. And they were getting a lot of call for people asking whether they could ship them. And it's not a service that they have, but being the distribution company that we are, we can ship stuff out a lot easier than they could. So we are now able to sell the Avanos from the UK we can sell them pre-built, we can sell them flat packed and the same out of Europe and these guys will send everywhere in Europe. First of all, let's assume that you've ordered it and it's come flat pack. I'm going to take you through what you'd get in the box and then we'll talk you through the process to build it. So we have one in pieces here and we have one that's pre-built just so I can refer to it as we're filming. So first of all, you'll get a box like this with a, or currently it comes in a box form with the hinges and a rope and the screws and fixings and you'll get a couple of bags, a little bag with a bunch of spares in and then a little bag like this that'll tell you what fittings uh, what shows you all the fittings that you need so really simple install tool wise you don't need a lot so here, i've listed here everything that you're going to need in this job so phillips screwdriver when it comes to put the top on a flat blade two 10 mils this is just to tighten up the rubber bungs we'll explain that as we go along you'll need one six mil allen key you need ideally two four mil allen key and then um, a ratchet. these are the parts that you'll get along the way so it's fairly easy to see. You've got the, the board for the top there, the Varno branded piece for the front of the drawer. Then you've got all the separate sections that make up the frame of it. We're just going to run you through how you make this look like this. Slightly different to long wheelbase and short wheelbase, but we'll show you the difference in that as we go along. We're going to fit one in that long short wheelbase van there. And also we're going to show you how we do the long wheelbase one in Marcos because he has one in his vehicle. So as you can see here, these are the pieces for the frame. So first of all, most of it will be pre-assembled. Even if you've bought it flat packed, it will come like this with the drawer runners and the hinges already on. So just to give you an idea, this is how best to lay it all out for when you come to build it. You'll see there's the cross member for the back. There's the two sides, texture on the inside. These are the hooks that hold it in place. That's the lower section there, which is that support. Just there, you can see and then same again on the other side. So we're going to assemble the first part and show you how we've done that. That's the front, you can see the holes there, same on that side, matching the original. Then you've got these three pieces here. The larger piece goes at the front, those two look very similar, but the larger one with the three holes is the front piece, that's your middle piece, and then your back piece there is the sculpted, the shape piece. Right, so the first thing to do is insert, Mark will show you, you've got a whole load of these pieces, insert them into each of the center supports make sure when you pop these in that you're lining the hole up with where the hole is on the on the outside so you can see there's a hole there so just line that up right so next up off for the sides up so you'll see here it's the smoother side on the outside the texture side goes on the inside so offer these up to the three supports and then screw them in place. If you find that the barrel nuts or the dowel nuts that you previously inserted aren't straight, you can just use a flat blade screwdriver on the other side to twist them straight. And then these will go in nice and easily. What size Allen key was that? Remember? Marco, what size Allen key is that? That's a uh, four millimeter. They're so focused. Yeah, all a four mil Allen key. So just work your way around and repeat this in all the areas. Don't over tighten them. Just tighten them up loosely just to get them in situ first and then we can go around and tighten them all up after. So once you're doing the two front two supports, repeat on the other side. Right, so next up we're gonna support the back piece. So you'll need to put the barrel nuts in here. So you've got three positions for this, holes on the frame there, and then that will line up with these three holes here. You should have three there, there, and there. And then once you've done that, repeat again on the other side. It's the upper one there. 
Right, so moving on to installing the back support. It's textured side out this time, and you'll see in the shape, you'll see the three holes down the side, then you'll see some additional screw points down the bottom there. Make sure those parts are at the bottom. So if you're not down, it's aren't straight. If you haven't got this bit in location, you can always use the flathead screwdriver just to turn that to allow it to locate. And then repeat on the other side. All right, next up, so for ease, the best way, best thing to do now is to flip it over so you can access the screws on the other side. And then with it upside down, you can now locate the back section. So with that in place, you need to, again, use the flatbed here if you need to straighten these up, but then screw into those dowels. And work your way along. Move around the sides and same again. And then repeat on the other side. Then while it's upside down, continue to secure the boards with the down nuts. You've got another one in the centre there and two in the rear. The same again, round on the other side. There we go. and repeat the same on the other side. So with all that tightened up, next thing to do is flip it back over and then move on to installing the rest of the drawer. Right, so next move on to building the drawer. So textured side up from the drawer and you'll see these holes front and back. This board is symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which way around you have it, but you'll need to put the fixings in each of the four holes. And then repeat the same on the other side. Dead set way to do this, but we found this is the simplest way to make it easy. So if you pull the drawer runners out and push them back in again slightly, you'll find that they click and locate into a locking position part way. And that just allows you to have access to the back of the drawer runners to locate the fittings. So same principle as you've done before. Line up the dowel nuts in place and then repeat on the other side. And now those are in position, you're going to secure the back part. So same again, textured side inwards facing the drawer and you'll just see the channel there to line it up at the bottom of the drawer is going to clip into or slide into. And then you've got these fittings here. Now the same again on the other side and they line up with the down nuts and then same again on the other side for the top and the bottom right so the next thing is to install these rubber stoppers that go on the back of the drawer you may find that these are pre-installed and they go just here if not and you secure those with a six mil allen key once you've got those in place you'll screw the rubber stoppers in once these are in and once you've got the final draw placement when it's closed, they can be adjusted just to allow you to get exactly the right amount of movement from the drawer. And we can later on you can check the screw length here to allow you to move it further in or further out. Right, so next we're going to tip it up to put the base of the drawer in. So if you just release the catches and push the drawer frame all the way in, and then we think this is the best way to do it, but then tip the whole unit up on its back and then that makes it easier for you to slide the draw bottom in line it up textured side up line it up with the grooves that are already in the side of the drawers and then slowly and carefully lower it down into position and it should meet up nicely with the groove in the bottom of the drawer so next up, grab the front of the drawer, so that's the Avano branded part. Um, while it's in this position, it's easy just to line it up, and slot it onto the drawer bottom. It should fit nice and neatly and secure. And then we'll go around and screw that in place. So on the underside here, these are all pre-installed, so you just need to in install four more here, here, 
and the same again on that side to lock the sides in now to fix it in place it's the same principle as all the others line it up with a screwdriver if needed then back to tightening these up and then repeat on the other side so once you've done the four on the outside just work your way along to do the other four lining up those along the way so one thing to note when you're doing the center ones up make sure you don't over tighten these just tighten these up after so it just makes it easier for you to line up the holes on these ones if you over tighten these you might find it harder to line up with the ones for the center section once they're all located in place you can go around and nip them all up a bit tighter right now that's done tip it back up on the front so you can access the back of the drawer to tighten up those fixings in the same way that you've just done the front again open the drawer just to give you better access to those holes at the back there it's the same principle here make sure you've not over tightened these ones here to allow you a bit of movement at the bottom here and then just work your way along and do up four screws along the bottom center section there there and there and then repeat along the back of the drawer so once you've lined all those up you can just go back round and nip all these up just so they're nice and tight so there's no movement or any rattle then if you need to you can just make some small adjustments to this rubber stop so just see where the drawer slides back to and then tighten it up a little just to stop any movement but that bit of thread there allows you to move it in and out slightly to uh, stop the drawer having any extra movement once it's back in place so next up you'll see you should get four of these little hooks if they're not pre-installed already but just to show you on this one here that's already made up you've got two each side that's the shape they should be and the angle they should be at and they're there just to allow the, the top when it's on to lock into various different positions and stop it from moving around so you'll see there's two on each side two at the very back and then two towards the front there and there moving on to installing these hooks the fittings change now slightly so you're using the shorter screw and then these female nuts here so the female side goes into the textured side where the hole is and then use the male side to lock it in place so you line that up with the hole you can see how far that is from the front there and then you're using a four mil allen key for both of these so then you repeat both sides and also on the back again just to show you over here you'll see the flat sides face outwards with the hooks facing inwards and the same again there on the other side flat sides facing outwards texture in towards the inside and the hook is facing each other so we've noticed with the Avanos, Josh and the team there are constantly evolving what they do and how they improve it. So the very latest versions have added another section just here. It's the same principle. You've got your down nut in there and you, your screw here that you can install. I don't necessarily think it's necessary. We've never used it before, never had a problem. But they've added an addition that you can add this piece here to lock around the wheel arch just to give it that for that extra security. So instead of going through the whole process of lining this board up and showing you just screwing a load of screws in, this is the format that it should be in when you build it all up. So if you lay it all out, there's the large bulkhead section. You'll then see that other section with a cutout and a little sticker showing you not to trap your fingers. But if you just line it up with this image so you can see that's how it should lay out. We won't go through screwing all the screws in, but just to give you an idea of, or to help you show where each part needs to be. So if you look at these hinges, when you come to fit them, there's two types of screws that go in here. There's the best example there. See how you've got a smaller hole pre-drilled and then you've got these two larger holes. So if Marco just shows you the screws. So those ones there, the pointy ones, they go in the smaller hole and then you'll see these ones here for the larger holes. So you put the two larger ones in there, the smaller one in there, and they line up all along. So at this stage, build up the two sections as we've done here. So you've got this lower piece and this top piece and that just allows you to install it in the vehicle easier. So with the hinges, just lay them out flat. They should all line up and clip really nicely and they're really well CNC'd. And then just use a Phillips screwdriver to tighten them all up. And then repeat that process with all the other hinges. And now you've got that all built and the hinges on, we're going to move the base back onto the frame just to add two more parts for the support. This just helps you access the part you need. So there's only this section you need at this time. If you just lay that on the back of the bed there, 
So now I'll hinge that up and you've got these two pieces. These may be pre-installed just what, depending on what level of install they've come with. But they're going to go here and here. So textured side in towards the inside of the vehicle and then line it up. You've got these down nuts as well here. Line it up with the screws. And then once that's done, repeat the same again on the other side. Again, making sure that the textured side of the wood faces into the bed and the smooth side is on the outside. At this stage, we're going to install the pre-built part. So you may already find that it's come to you pre-installed. If you've bought it and it's pre-built, this is the form that you'll get it in. So we're going to show you how to now put this in the vehicle. So going to the back of the vehicle, this one being the short wheel base version, you'll need to remove the anchor points that are already here. So this is a M10 spline. There's four of those, one there, one there, and then those two points there just in front of the door. So we've already loosened these off, but take these out. Now, depending on whether you're going to be taking it in and out regularly or not, to what you leave in here they do actually fit over the top of this so you can leave this d-ring in position i tend to leave these in so when i take it out they're still there but repeat that process on all those four there and there right so next up we're going to lift it in the back of the van now you just need to lift it up over the shape of the rear tailgate or barn door same you just need to lift it up over where the lights shapes are once you're in past that part you can bring it down lower and then line it up with the holes in the back. You see, you just need to line those holes up with the holes in the floor. Next, you will have four large dome head screws and a washer that requires a six mil Allen key. Line it all up properly first. So you line up the two rear sections and do them up and repeat the same on the other side. Don't overly tighten it at this stage, just so it gives you a bit of movement to, in case you need any adjustments on the front to line up the front section and then repeat the same around the other side right so once you've secured the back two you can do the front two with them in position you can open the drawer right out held in place and you don't have to worry about it flipping out on you and once you open that drawer you'll see the same there's two anchor points just here and also over there it's the same principle as you've just done with the back same dome head screws and washers line them up and then tighten them up with that six mil allen key and then once those are done, you can go round the back and tighten those two up. So the side supports I mentioned earlier go on here. So Marco will just install one just to show you. And that just gives you extra side support if you choose to fit it and then repeat the same on the other side. Right, so the other thing that these supports act as is storage for the legs. So we'll explain a little bit later what these legs are for. But same again, what you can do with these, this is a nice little addition. It just means that these lugs aren't sliding around in the back of your drawer when you're not using them. They just clip in there nice and tightly. So your legs are secure while you're driving along. So back to the two sections of the bulkhead and the bed part. So first of all, we're going to take the top section. Again, just making sure you lift it up over that area where the rear lights are. And then we'll go back over and put this section in. So next, grab the other section, make sure the hinges are folded up and out of the way so they're not going to foul on the part that's already in there. Then lift this straight in, then line it up with the hinges. To secure it in place, there's four holes here and here, and you need to line those up with the holes that are already in the frame. And I would secure this back section first just because it's easier to pop the screws through and line it up with the holes. So back again using these screws. Now feed it through the holes and then it's easier just to lift up this section to try and line them up with the existing holes and then repeat that at the front and also over on this side. Don't do these up too tight because you'll want the extra movement to be able to lift up this corner to allow you to line up these holes as well. Once you're happy that you've got those four all lined up properly, you can then just go around and tighten them up. And repeat the same over on this side. Okay, so next you just need to secure the back section. So you'll see these four hinges here. So all you need to do, you'll, you'll see from the screws here, you've got the two larger ones and the two smaller ones. Or two larger ones and the one smaller one, sorry. Locate those hinges, they should sit in nice and neatly on both, or on all four. 
and then just go around and screw them all up then repeat the same process on the other three hinges first of all put a knot in one end final stages of the installation and then we'll show you all the different modes it's in so you'll see you'll get a black cord with it so feed that through one side off and then feed it through one of the holes and then down through the hole on the opposite side and you just need to feed it through a bit up and round and then put another knot in once you've got that knot in it's installed so the next step is to show you how uh, it works and what it is you can do in all the different positions it can be in so obviously at the moment currently this is the bed the sleeping in position mark or demo how you open the drawers you've got these two latch points here you just pull them up and it slides out slides out all that way you can put loads of kit in there can take loads of weight on there you can slide that back in and it locks into there you go there's a demonstration so how much do you weigh Marco? Uh, 80. Yeah, 80 ish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. If you push it back in again, it has like a part way locking uh, point. There you go. And from there, pull the latches again and it will allow it to slide all the way in. Okay, so there's your bed system. So you'll see from here, You've got this access flap to be able to lift it up to be able to access what you've got underneath easily enough then the legs that we installed earlier on will show you where they go for when it's in the sleeping position so if you just pull those two legs out marco so you won't need these if you've got a combi so this doesn't have any seats in it so you'll see how the bed section's folded out completely so you slide those legs out of there and then just to offer some additional support to this section in the back here those legs slot into these holes here and that's just supporting the bed section and again the same on the other side we supply the 40 winks uh, mattress that are great to go on these some people use like an inflatable mattress um, super strong super comfortable but yeah there you go that's it in its bed form so from there if we take those legs back out again and then we'll fold it up in the kind of van bulkhead kind of mode as i would call it and this is where that rope comes into play slide it back through so once you've got that folded up into the bulkhead position you'll just need the rope that you've knotted from the other side so the rope then slots into those two cutouts here and then on this anchor point here you just cross it over and then pull it down if you pull down on the rope nice and tight that's just going to make it really secure to stop the bulkhead moving i mean that's really solid it's not going to move and it's not going to rattle it's not going to make any noises but then that, that allows you then to have all that extra storage you don't need to worry about stuff that's in the back hitting your passengers or moving anywhere double layer of storage like a bulkhead slash bed slash everything you could possibly need so that's the next section you can have it in and then from there there's another section so we'll just show you that one so the next position is if you've got the seats in but you don't want to have it as a bulkhead so you can see through your back window or just have that extra level of storage release the two ropes bring the bulkhead section down towards you a bit and then you reach over and you can see that handle just there so you lift that section up and you'll see underneath there and you'll see it's locking in just there and that's stopping it from moving it's in those little hook systems we showed you earlier on but that would work now for an extra flat level of storage but also if you still had your combi seat here if you had a combi you don't have to have that bulkhead up but you've still got that two layer of storage you can put stuff here that isn't sliding in and out you can put more stuff on that side that isn't sliding in and out and you've obviously still got access to that drawer with this folded up section there so you can access it, everything you need so that's hopefully been useful for you to show you how to install it into a short wheelbase and how to build it so now we're going to go over to marco's long wheelbase and just show you the difference in the installation process everything else is pretty much the same it's just the way you secure it in a long wheelbase is different so we'll go and show you that now so the principle of the long wheelbase is the same you'll just see the unit itself is longer to allow for the extra 40 centimeters that you have in the back of a long wheelbase van so the only real difference when it comes to installing it in the long wheelbase is these parts here i'll just take you in closer to these to show you how you line them up so it's teardrop shaped you just line them up with the original holes and then you'll just see you point these two pieces so they're relatively pointing at each other so the thinner part goes on the inside of the van wider part goes on the outside pointing inwards and then that will all make sense when you offer up the avano itself and that's just because because of the longer drawer not being able to slide out all the way those fixings need to be accessed through the drawer afterwards so i'll just show you there so again with the long wheelbase one it's these front closer to the door that you're using as opposed to this section here that fix it down 
you've got the same points at the back here to install it and then I'll just show you once it's in how you install the front fixings. So in the Avano system you, itself you'll see in the bottom here these two holes and they're access holes for those fittings so when we lift the Avano in you'll see once you open the drawer you need to use those access holes to bolt the front section of it down. Lift this in the same principle as you do the short wheel base just make sure you lift it up and over the dipped in areas where the rear lights are. Once you've got past that first part you can lower it in and what you're doing here is there's cutouts in the underside that are dropping into those teardrop sections so it'll all make sense once you've lined up the front holes. So get your front holes located in first just tighten these up both sides make sure they're secure but not overly tightened to give you that bit of movement and then once you've done the front side you can just tighten these back up again right so once that's in place locked in the front you open the drawer up and then you'll see these holes line up if you bring it all the way back if you look in there you'll see it will line up with those teardrop shape and then so you then have these like little spreader plates so you, you line that up with the hole now that's just securing the base plate in with the teardrop shape and then you'll have a smaller screw this time lines up six mil allen key again drop that in there and then tighten that up and then repeat the same over on this side so once you've got those in kind of finger tight or tight enough as you need replace the top section the same as we showed you on the long wheel base once you've got that all nice and secure in then just go around and tighten all of these up same again on the back section so once you've got the back section on and you've gone around and done up all the four anchor points that lock it down you'll see you have these two plastic caps that just cover up the access holes they just pop into each section this side and that side and that's it all complete and done so there you go hopefully that video was useful so that's how you install how you build, I think everything you could possibly want to know about an Avano, how you lay them out. Hopefully you found that useful if you've got one already or you've ordered one or thinking of ordering one. So the Avanos are available from Transports HQ UK. Uh, they're also available from Transport HQ Europe. There you go, where we are now. These guys can ship them anywhere in Europe. They can install them here if you want to. You can have a flat pack, you can have them pre-built. Just get in touch with us or get in touch with them if it's something that you feel you'd like in the back of your van. We've raved about these for a long time from when I first discovered these back in 2020 and had one in my van thought they were a great bit of kit it's something we've never sold we've just always Varno have done and we've just supported but now we have the opportunity to sell them to you so if you think this video is useful please do like the video more people that like it the more YouTube show it to people and other people get to see this wonderful product the Avano please do subscribe to the channel plenty more videos coming ring that little bell so you get notifications when more videos come out and as always thanks for watching